But at the same time, in relation to the second uh, panel this morning, it is very important to remember that we have all together and all governments in the WISIS accepted a certain and re-established a certain number of elements. And in particular, I would like to recall the famous paragraph 42 of the Tunis Agenda that says measures undertaken to ensure internet stability and security to fight cybercrime and to counter spam must protect and respect the provisions for privacy and freedom of expression that are contained in the relevant parts of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Geneva Declaration of Principles. In this respect, we do believe that the rights and protections that are established by internationally agreed treaties and conventions are and should be fully applicable to the Internet. It is a challenge. We all know it. But we have all signed it. It is important to remember that the documents in the WISIS contain a lot of the balance positions that we have um, discussed. Um, and this message in particular was highly reaffirmed during a European uh, dialogue on internet governance that took place in Strasbourg a couple of weeks ago. And I take the opportunity to make just one announcement that the workshop that was supposed to discuss national was actually take place tomorrow morning uh, in room six or seven um, in the first uh, session at nine o'clock. So as it was difficult to announce, it's important. I just finish with that saying that for the European Union, the proactive measures are almost as important as the remediation measures because it's a question of architecture and as Alan Michael was mentioning the question of lightning, yeah. sometimes the structure of the yeah. space can deter or prevent actions of a bad quality. And um, here I want to finish on a personal note. Uh, in as much as I appreciate what Marilyn was saying about the responsibility of the user, uh, I hope we will not get into an environment whereby the equivalent from the real world would be, oh, I just simply walked in the street, I've been attacked by someone, it was my fault because I was not protecting myself. I mean, the general responsibility that the environment is trustable, and um, I, I think that uh, Alan Michael was clearly showing from a parliamentarian view that the discussion we're having here is very close in its nature to the ones that all parliaments around the world have. And the fact is we are testing here a very strange and new way to have that kind of discussion. And I must say that I'm very pleased at that stage about the interaction with, uh, among all the stakeholders uh, here. And I think that's one of the interesting things. Bertrand raised the point. Alan Michaels raised the point. The interesting thing is we are sitting here thinking in some way we're in a vacuum. The Internet does not, you know, does not occupy a vacuum. It is a place in the real world, and real world laws in different, different uh, countries apply to it. Cybercrime comes under normal crime. There are, there are things that can be pursued, and I think sometimes we forget that. We seem to think that cyberspace is, is something separate, and cybersecurity and cybercrime are something different. Maybe they're not. Maybe you disagree with me. Let me know if you do. Um, I want you to consider this issue of definition, which uh, Natasha raised. As to, it is one of the issues. How do we decide what should be criminalized, what shouldn't? That's a cultural issue as much as anything. Something that I think might be criminalized is not something that another country might think ought to be criminalized. These are all issues which are raised for our international internet. Uh, let's have some more comments from the floor. Uh, I'll take the gentleman over there. And